YouTube, welcome. This is the season finale of the episodes. This is all of them. This will be the complete story for Revelry. Um, as you can see, it is only three episodes, so it should be a relatively fast story, right? Um, this is my co-host, George. He's going to teach me how to say the words, right? Because some of them are difficult. Um, but it's the end of the year, end of the season. So it is time for the full comic reading. Weekend Warriors. Eat, sleep, compete, repeat. Legends rarely get a day off, but when they do, they make the most of it. Prank calls, fake caves, orphans with weapons. It's just another day in the Outlands. Chapter 1. Search and not a rescue. This day has been a rough one. It's nice to get off my feet for a sec. And at least the company isn't bad. Ah, another cola, my enormous friend. <laughs> Don't mind if I do, brother. Something on your mind? Usually all sunshine and shaskas. You seem a little broody today. Honestly, it's, uh, it's kind of creeping me out. Mm. Ugh, you got me, buddy. I've been r running search and rescue missions all day with Saris. It's been a bit of a waste today. Huh? Hey, what? No, don't say that. Well, actually, I wasn't there, so what do I know? What? Why do you feel like that? Uh, there's nothing better than the look of relief and hope on someone's face when you come to the rescue. If they turn that feeling into a drink, I'd chug it down faster than you can say mahalo. You'd be surprised how fast I can say ma... Ma... Ha ha... Ma... Ha, ha, ma... Ha, ma... La, Carry on. The good news is, there haven't been any serious emergencies recently. But I keep getting called for rescues that aren't really rescues. A rescue that isn't a rescue? Ooh, I know this one. Uh, something about a melted block of ice and a train running north. Heh, <laughs> it's not a riddle wit. I'll give you an example. The guy calls me all distraught, hollering so much that I can't figure out what's going on. All I can get is porch... And hurry, and help. Sheesh. Scary. <laughs> That's what I thought. Once I got there, I saw that a dog ran under his porch and he couldn't reach it. The dog wasn't even in trouble. When I reached for it, it ran out. No problem. The dog took off and the guy didn't notice. He just wanted to take a photo with the legend. And he decided this was the best way. <sighs> Turns out the dog wasn't even his dog. Then, I get a call from a lady that there's been a building collapse, and they need the strongest Saris agent we've got. And, uh, obviously, that's you. Ooh, so strong. <sighs> yeah, well, I show up with all my gear, my heart was wet racing, and I was ready to jump into action. <sighs> but they demolished the building on purpose. They were breaking ground on a new apartment complex and wanted a celebrity there. And you know that flash storm that came through this afternoon? I got a, a call about some kids that were too far out in the ocean while there was lightning warning. Oh. They weren't stuck. They were partying on the beach. They were faking it to get me out there. Wanted me to throw up the dome shield like an umbrella for their party and get some Gibraltar autographs. Uh, hmm. Uh. I don't understand why none of them wanted to try to get me there. Maybe my parents' fear is too high. It might be time for old Gibraltar to hang up his Sears gear. Being a legend has made me more of a distraction than a help. Don't get me wrong, false alarms are better than real alarms. I'm glad nobody was in trouble. But I joined the games to inspire people to bring awareness to Sears. Not to pose for photos. Gotta be honest, I, uh, I, don't, I don't follow. A call is passed from in from Saris. I wonder who's trying to get me to speak at graduation or join a family dinner. Please help. I'm in Norlock Lake. Uh huh. You're in the lake. Probably a party bow that needs me to deliver extra sunscreen. Wait. 
I know that voice, but I can't place it. P -p Please, my, my trident, it, it went off the road and into the lake. I can't swim and it's starting, and it's starting to sink. Okay, hang tight, brother, and try to stay calm. I'm on my way. Got a jet. <laughs> I'm coming too. If uh, they're looking for a celebrity, think how pumped they'd be when two of us show up. <laughs> uh, maybe I should join Sarah's. Mirage isn't happy that I'm making him ride in the sidecar on my bike. But if he wants to tag along, we go by my rules. We pull up at the lake. I don't see anyone else here. Something's definitely up. Uh, Jibs, is this where some sort of press event or celebrity hangout? Wouldn't there be more people here and less lake? Help! Over here! To my surprise, I can see a trident bobbing in the lake. I knew I recognized that voice. M Michael? Michael? Uh, who? I jumped into the lake and swam harder than I've ever swam before. Huh? Wait. Nix? Michael? Your ex-boyfriend's kid? Go to him, Jibby. Swim to the son of your long-lost love. Swim, I say! Not so good at swimming, but I'm right behind you. M uh, uh, Michael, are, y are you? He's barely hanging on. And just the slow sinking tried flapping around and struggling to tread water. I grab him and start to swim us back, fighting the pull of the sinking ship. Almost. Oh, nice to meet you. I I'll catch you. I'll catch you on the shore. Wow. Mirage really isn't a good swimmer. You only made it halfway to us. Me? I'm like a guppy in the water. Grab him too. Swim us over to shore. The three of us stand on dry land, finally on our feet again. Michael's shaken up, but he looks okay. And, of course, I'm shaken up too. He looks more like Nick every time I see him. I just saved my ex-boyfriend's son who hates me. This sure isn't how I thought this day would go. Okay. You gonna tell me what happened? It's... it's you! It's just my luck. Ugh, this is so embarrassing. Okay, what happened is my friend's dad owns a fleet of tridents and we, uh... Borrowed some. Huh. <laughs> Sounds familiar. It was so stupid, but we wanted to see if they would stay afloat over water. It turns out they do. As long as they don't run out of power. My dumb friends got scared and took off. Oh, I get it now. Look. I know you're not excited to see Gibraltar here, but I've always got your back, whether or not you want it. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Hey, I know I shouldn't ask you this, but... P please don't tell Dad. He gets so worried. Oh. Y y you sure? Michael doesn't say anything, just hangs his head. I know he's not a fan of secrets. Michael. Your secret is safe with me. I... Thanks. Seriously. We say some quick, awkward goodbyes and he takes off. I wonder when I'll see him again. Oh, Bye, Michael! Bye! Weird that he didn't want my autograph. Hey, Jibs. Uh, let's go rescue more fans. Yeah? Oh. <laughs> let's do it, brother. Chapter 2. We fought a zoo? I don't understand days off. Elliot told me they're days to do whatever you want, except break your mom out of jail for some reason. He suggested I go to a place called a zoo. A place full of wild animals in a city? I thought Elliot was teasing me, like when he told me cake was gross and he, and he likes gross stuff. It's not, and he doesn't. But here it is, the Gaia Public Zoo. I can feel Echo romping around in my hood. <laughs> Someone's excited. <laughs> we can smell the animals from the gates, and I'm sure they can smell us. Especially me, since I haven't gotten the hang of the shower or clothes washing devices. Why not shower with your clothes? Elliot tells me that's not good, but couldn't tell me why. This should be a huge open space with humans and animals all around hunting and surviving. Instead of animals packed in tiny pits and cages and tanks with humans packed into sidewalks, watching each other eat snacks from buckets. 
so just more city. But more city has buttered popcorn. Echo loves buttered popcorn. I toss them up so he can catch it midair. Did you know Prowler Pea smells like but this buttered popcorn? But it doesn't taste like it, that's for sure. Uh, are, are you talking to me and taking my popcorn? Yep! Did you know why all these animals are in cages and pits? Uh, I guess to keep us safe? Like from eating our popcorn without asking? But you'd be mostly safe without the cages, so long as you weren't totally stupid. Right. I'm gonna go over here now. Okay, thanks for the popcorn. Bye! Uh, Echo, I don't know. This isn't like they thought it would be. Like, those arctic prowlers are trapped in a pit. They can't hunt, can't run, they can't be themselves. Wait! This is an animal jail! Civilization loves to lock things up. Right, popcorn friend? Did... Did... Did you follow me over here? Right, Echo? Toss up a piece of popcorn, but it comes back down. Uh, e e Echo? He's not above me, sneaky guy. I blow my command whistle, but he doesn't return. My heart starts to thump. Uh, Echo? He's, he's not showing up on my radar. Um, I search everywhere, blowing every command on my whistle. I find a footprint in the prowler pits, which leads me to a dropping in the flyer, Avery, which leads me to the pygmy leviathan tank, where I hear a woman's voice. Hey! You! Get out of the tanks! Now! We're allowed in the exhibits? These animals should be free. We should be free with them. This is such an animal jail. I climb out of the tank. The uniform person turns out to be a uh, zoo guard. See? Definitely a jail. Still, I tell her about Echo. Trained as he may be, he's still a wild animal. Did you think he... Do you think maybe he just, I don't know, flew away? Ha! Uh, <laughs> he's not wild. He's Echo. He wouldn't leave me. He doesn't sound so free to me. Something twists in my stomach. Is she right? Animals return to reliable food sources. Was... Was Echo just doing that with me? If it wasn't for this lifetime ban I'm about to give you, I'd invite you to go get your fill of the bats in our cave enclosure. Oh. <gasps> There's a bat cave here! Why did you say so? Hey, get back here! I pull my arm free from the zoo guard's grip and I take off sprinting. I usually hate signs always telling me what to do and what I can't do. But I follow ones shaped like a bat and they lead me to a door set into a fake folder with a cartoon bat drawn on it. I go in... And there's another set of doors. Reminds me of when I visit Mom, where you go through doors that are, then are locked in a little prison, their own, that, like, let you in, visit room. I should do. It's pitch dark. First, I hear sharp clicks. Then feel a small gust of wind as wings brush past my head. I catch the smell of buttered popcorn. Unless the prowler's marked as territory, echoes here. I look through my spotter's lens to help me find a position when I'm fighting in Apex matches, so I should pick him up. A little target icon searches the bat dangling in the ceiling. Not him. Not him. Not him. And something hits me. Not physically, but like, in the mind. It feels like I'm back on Pagos. Inside the GDS Vantage, my mom's prison ship. I shake the feeling off as another bat drops from the ceiling and fly past me. Then my HUD pings. Something in the crowd of the ceiling. Echo? When I reach up, when I reach for him, I hold out my hand, but see that he's tucked under the wind of an older bat. The image of a baby Echo crawling out from under his mother's body on the GDS Vantage flashes in front of my eyes, and I wince like it's the sun's glare. Looks like he's bonded with one of our mother bats. I didn't hear her come in. I expect her to grab my arm. Instead, she puts her hand on my shoulder. I feel the tension slowly melt into sadness. I... I never thought of Echo like a pet. But maybe he's only with me because I trained him to need me? 
And you think the zoo is bad? Echo looks up at me and reaches for me with one of his little hands gripping the tip of my finger. But he doesn't let go of the bat. <sighs> I didn't mean to, Echo. I promise I didn't. I guess I told myself I had to take care of you because I killed your mom. But it was because I needed you and that wasn't fair. You killed his mom? That's terrible. I was hunting. Every calorie counts on Pagos. I start talking as Echo lets go of my finger to nestle into the bat's fur even more. You... You want to stay here. I... Uh, I understand. I'll visit you whenever I visit Mom, okay? And when I finally free Mom, I'll free you too. And all the animals here. No. No, you won't. Now let's go. I leave the zoo in a daze. It's as though I'm walking through waist-deep snow, numb from head to toe. I hold the whistle in my upturned palm, thinking about all the training, about Echo's little face when a piece of popcorn lands in my palm. <laughs> Echo? Echo lands in my forearm and nuzzles the piece of popcorn, and nuzzles the piece of popcorn towards me. Tears break free of my eyes and stream down my face. Though the teary blur, I can see Echo looks freaked out. I can understand not wanting to stay in that animal jew, in an animal jail. But, you don't have to stay with me. You're free, Echo. Echo looks at me, then the popcorn, then at me, then eats the popcorn. A laugh escapes my throat, and he bounds up my arm, headbutts my face, and dips into the hood. Laughing and crying, I grab a handful of popcorn and shove it in my mouth. It tastes amazing. L listen, lady, you can have my popcorn, okay? Just, just stop following me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Chapter 3. Remnants of Affection. I've got this, best girlfriend. The robot who pulled me from a dumpster springs from my side, grappling past the f heavy fire raining down on our cover. We are outnumbered, with the useless qualifier we had as our third having gotten himself shot earlier. Oh, Ooh, they're on the move. I rush to join him when a charge fills the air. My vision begins to shake its crypto and his damn EMP. If I can strike him or that pesky drone of his down, it... All goes black for a moment. Then my visuals gradually return. However, what lies before me is not the Apex games, but a distant memory. I'm saying there isn't any way to make this go any faster. Peck is the one with all the resources. If you want the Branthium, you shut your mouth and you keep sitting on your hands until I tell you it's good time. I lean back in my chai with a sigh. Idiots. All of them. Making a move prematurely would leave us with nothing. I'm not about to lose the last payday I'll ever need. Uh, do Dr. Reed? Turning my desk, I see the blue eyes of Newton Summers peering around my office door under his telltale reddish blonde mop. Hmm. Newton. Ah, oh, yes. Come on in. He enters, carrying a large cardboard box with the ease of a grown man. Of course, He'd sprouted up like a weed over the last few years. I see the move is going well. Uh, I, I guess you can say that. I, I feel less stressed than you look. Are you okay? <sighs> I'm, I'm fine. Just having an off day. How is the new place? It's, it's filled with boxes, but I'm settling in. Still have a lot of cleaning to do with the old place, though. And I'm on my own since Granny's back on planet side. Speaking of which... Uh, I found a bunch of things in Mum's stuff. I thought you might want. He places the box down on my desk and I glance inside. There are various items inside that I'd forgotten about over the years. Old pictures of Dr. Summers and I at the lab. A faded news article about our work. And... Were these... Your mother's? Newton's fl face flushes when he sees the item in my hands. 
a p quality pair of nunchaku with engraved black handles. Uh, no, they're mine. I I got them when I was 14 and thought you could use them. I saw them on a window and begged Granny for weeks to buy them for me. And I may have leaned on being sad about Mum a little bit. I can't just throw them away after Granny made, after I made Granny feel so bad. <clears throat> you played your grandmother for Nunchaku? It was a phase. Uh... That you caused, by the way. You always look so cool practicing with swords and knives and nunchucks. I thought I could do it too, but I gave up the second I, time I hit myself in the face. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have let you tag along with me when I went to the gym. Ah, oh, don't say that. Those trips meant I got to spend time with you. Don't pretend like you wouldn't. You won't enjoy having me around every day when I start the internship. Hmm. Hmm. Lillian was the one who insisted after you asked her about it. I I just feel like it's something I have to do. Remember that dream I told you I had? About Mum? About how she was trying to get back to me? She's gone, Newton. I know, I know. That's, that's what everyone says, but what if she's not? We think black holes are dangerous because of the way they consume. Except we don't actually know what happens beyond that. Maybe Mom came out the other side somehow. Maybe I can see her again one day. If she's out there somewhere. I just want to finish her work. If that'll help her get back. And if she isn't, then at least I'll have help save the Outlands like her. I watch him for a moment. So bright and full of hope. Gazing up at the ceiling as though he can see through it. Past the sky into an empty cosmos above. It was unfortunate you were in my way, Dr. Summers. Hmm. I wish the circumstances had been different. You did everything you could to save her. Still, I, I'm grateful I had you looking out for me, Dr. Reed. Then you understand why I don't want you working on this project. We're searching for a new energy source for the Outlands, and any pursuit of power demands sacrifice. I have seen it time and time again. Regrettably, your mother is not the only casualty. D Doctor, did you... Did you lose someone too? I turn away from him. Always so perceptive, just like his mother. My brother. A long time ago. He was the same age as you were when your mother passed. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. You're an adult now. It's time to start looking out for yourself. You are not to become one of those sacrifices. Uh, of course, Dr. Reed. Uh, you don't have to worry about me. <laughs> Says the one who hits himself in the face with an chuckle. And that's why they are yours now. Well, I guess I better get to the apartment. There's still a whole lot of cleaning to do. I'll see you on Monday for my first day. If there's nothing I can say to dissuade you from doing this internship, then yes, I'll see you then. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Reed. I'll be a really good assistant, I promise. Just like you were to Mum. <laughs> An ironic statement, I think, as he departs. We were just discussing sacrifices under the powers that should be... I will not let Newton be another. <laughs> the memory cuts to static before my vision returns to normal. I see the chaotic energy of the rift swirling above me with a scuffed up Pathfinder hovering nearby. Huh? Oh, what? 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 What is going on? Uh, the match is over. You were unconscious, and I couldn't hold off the other team. Are you alright? Defeated? Irritated, I sit up. More determined than ever to destroy the piece of me that calls herself Leia. Fine. Merely had an off day. When she is gone, I will bring an end to those. And that's the end of uh, the the uh, revelry comic story. Kind of a little inside look at what everyone does when they're not in the games. 
Um, next season's one is Arsenal. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that they go into ballistic and go into his backstory of him being one of the OG legends. I think that'd be a really good story for them to tell. But I guess we'll find out in a couple weeks. So as always, depending on where you are, morning, afternoon, even night, still trouble, stay safe, and we will talk to you all later. Bye. What's that, George? You really liked learning about everyone. It's like back, like kind of what they're doing on the sides. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I would like it if they would finish up some of their storylines, though. I will say that.